Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Hoot and a Half. I am your host, Matt King, joined with my co-host, Mike Sheffer. And today we are joined with Brooke Averick and Connor Wood. You may know them from TikTok, Lady Efron for Brooke, Fibula for Connor. We've had Connor on as a guest as well. You may have seen that episode. But also, you may be an active listener or viewer of their new podcast, Brooke and Connor make a podcast, which is under the TMG Studios, yeah. right? Would you call it a studio? I would. And call it a network or a studio. For oh. the longest time, I thought it was Brooke and Connor made a podcast, but it's make a podcast. No, yeah, we are in the process of making one currently. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. was actually like just a placeholder until we found out, until we figured it, something else right. out. And, it and just... then they were like, well, we made all the media assets <laughs> and we're going live. Well, yeah. we're going live. And like, then you came on Hoot and a Half like six months ago. Yes. And then right after our episode of Hoot and a Half, we went with you to the bar. Oh, that was that day. To meet Brooke. Oh! Oh, yeah. And that's oh, how weird. we met Brooke. Yeah. And I, I, I was kind of fangirling too yes. because you were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go down to Barney's. Uh, I'm going to see uh, Brooke. And I'm like, wait, who's Brooke? And he was like, Lady Efron. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm coming. And I, I was I like, was Mike, so she's going to be there. Yeah. I remember because, uh, yeah, I was I like, was okay, so I'm going to go. Too. And then you guys were like, do you guys want to go? And I was like, yeah, come on. And then, like, it ended up being, like, 15 of us that yeah. went. And then we ended up hitting it off so well, you had to leave. You had <laughs> yeah. to go to something else. And she's like, I want to go back to my place and play Yahtzee. <laughs> or, it wasn't and your Matt place. Came and then we played this fun game that Matt taught me, Derby Dash. And, oh, yes. You know, it was really just a kismet. It was really awesome. And then and, and it's just so crazy how well, like, you know, Patricia and Tristan, yeah. my girlfriend and her roommate, and how well, like, this whole kind of, like, friend group has happened. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. It's, it's it great. really is. I probably see you, Matt, like four to five times a week. I, I, was, I, 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 I love say. it. <laughs> and I don't know how many times I've said to Brooke, I feel like I manifested her in my life. Like she is like the ultimate like supporting character as uh, well as, as you. As, <laughs> as well as you. Ultimate supporting you character. Finish up. Finish up. <laughs> but I guess that we just see each other Do that often. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I just, I know I love having you guys around and like I even wanted to add that in the beginning. It's like not only you guys are guests here but like I see you guys really often. Yeah, you guys are like my really... new friends. I was listening to one of your past episodes and it, you guys were talking about common night nightmares mm -hmm. that you have and the one for each of you is my two like top common really? nightmares for brooke you said it was the driving and the brakes are broken yeah, when you're going you're, down the hill i get that one often i didn't realize that was a common one and for you it was that you have a college class <sighs> that you that you forgot that to you study. signed up for oh or, or that you forgot that you had and you yeah. haven't been you're attending going to all classes i've, I've had, had that, this dream I've before had that one too and what's then weird, you show up and it's like the last day of like you realize on the last day of class you have to go take a final and you miss the entire semester of classes yeah, yeah. and or you're you... and you're talking to the professor like what can i do what can i do and they're like it's over like... right for me it's i need one <laughs> class to graduate or one more class to graduate and i forgot to take it oh my and it's god like i was signed up yes. for it, yeah. but yes. i forgot it's to take forgetting it forgetting about and the I, college yeah. class how yeah. that sorry i'm having a moment right now i, I did how I, do all brains do the same thing i've had this exact dream multiple times and never remembered it until right now isn't that weird uh, my mom always would tell me like when i was growing up she goes i get college nightmares mm -hmm. still to this day oh my god and then i was like that's weird whatever and now, now i get them all the time that yeah is so so, so bad. the college ones it's, are it's really like bad. it's like a night it's like a whole night ruiner like when you wake up you're like wait i'm not in college but like it ruins your night because you're really. Like, oh. I love waking up from those because I'm like, yeah. oh, thank God, oh. that is. I am. I graduated. I like in I LA. Yeah. I got great friends. Yeah. So that life's it going well. Did kind of become true for me because right when I like graduated, they were like, "You can walk, but you still have to take." That's one what more happened class. to me, man. At Dude. UT. Yes. Whoa! What was the class? Spanish. Oh, statistics. You, oh. Wait, you forgot you had to take a language? Guess what? I had to take it four additional times after graduating because I was working full time. So, Dude! Because so. I, got, I got like a job offer and I was doing it like night class vibes. Oh, you know? man. When I was out here like doing vibe like with everybody, I was having to take like accounting online. Whoa. Statistical to accounting. To graduate. But I already walked. So like I was like, right. I don't really need my diploma. Yeah. Who but no you know what? Still in. to this day, I did take the class, but I have not gone to the university to be like, I've taken it. Can I have? To. I've never you can seen do my it diploma. Online. You can do it online. My parents made me because they already bought the frame from UT to frame my degree. <laughs> and and they were just... like, this frame was so expensive. <laughs> Getting your degree. And I was like, mm, okay. I'll 
I'll, get, I'll guys... get my degree that I just went to school for four years before I guess right. I'll get the degree. I did a little background research on the dreams and what they mean. Ooh. Oh, okay. okay. This I is good. I so, um, <laughs> I, 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 think... I feel like they probably both mean the same thing. I didn't even really read it that much. I kind of skimmed it. I was okay. like, that sounds interesting. Copy and paste. Yeah, okay. Let's hear it. Brooke, you said that you're common nightmare was that you're driving and the brakes don't work. Right. Okay, to dream of having your brakes fail as a result of weather conditions or whatever signifies the lack of control in your life is the result of circumstances beyond your control. You might be experiencing negative life-altering events like a death of a loved one or a severe illness or a financial crisis. I'm not experiencing any of those, but I do constantly feel out of control by like small tasks like washing the dishes like that to me is like an equivalent of a family di- family member dying like both are just like oh dear god are you, you um, have the tiktok where it says don't bother me i have to change my duvet cover i'll be busy for the next uh, eight hours yeah. That's my, I, yeah it's like small tasks to me are like as significant as like a horrible thing happening. changing a duvet cover is an eight hour task it, like that is not an exaggeration I, I think about that every single time i have to change my duvet cover i, I, I just don't put, do like, it anymore velcro at like the end of it you can think like, it does it no matter what you still have to get in there and yeah. you have to it's yeah. It's like, it's like, it's impossible. I have never done it while not being inside of the duvet cover. <laughs> like, I always find my way inside. So, I mean, you, you've known that I had my duvet that I had not even unwrapped from the bag. Right. I put it in in four seconds. <laughs> like, no no offense to you. You, you can put a duvet cover on a duvet in four seconds? I, I grabbed, I'm just going to tell you guys how I did it. Because, like, I, I was so stressed out about doing it. I'm not going to be able to do it. And finally, I just was like, you need to be in control of your life. <laughs> You can do this. You can do this. God, save the queen. You can do this. And I just put all of it, shoved it in, and now it's just one big bulk of mashed potato. You didn't kind tie of thing. anything. No. Nope. Well, you put on. a so ball in the middle. middle. But I had I had one side of it that I grabbed, and I just went. <laughs> right. You whipped and it, it into all shape. Goes to all four, and then I tied it off. Okay. But it went to uh, evenly spread out. You perfectly. put a ball in the middle and then whipped it and it worked? It. I put all of it in and then found the... I, I got one side lined up and all the rest is crunched up. I wish I could show you. I know what you're saying. Yeah. And then I just grabbed the side that I had, the two corners of the side that I had in, and just <laughs> yanked it and it ended like my last... That yeah. seems like a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what? Yeah, let's recreate that. I don't have to worry about it being a fluke because I'll never take that shit off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not washing it. No, I stopped washing mine. Yeah. Well, I really? Uh, I change mine once a week. I have two different your duvet, duvet cover. You change once, once a week? week. Yeah, we gotta go. Uh, <laughs> well, mine's, mine's changed once a week. Yeah, yeah. I used to never. I used to not have a duvet cover. That was like a crime against humanity. Oh, I uh, for years. You, mean you I just did had the that. white thing. Yeah, yeah. Just, just your. It's your blankets. Yeah. I've never had one. The, the down. I I had. I have a blanket under my my duvet. A top sheet. Yeah. I know. I have an actual like. I have my top sheet and then I have a blanket. And then I have my duvet. So the comforter is what goes in the duvet. Touch, you have a blanket underneath? It's a very thin... Um, oh, like kind of like a hotel style thing? A, a top it's sheet. a nice blanket. A to- it's a nice blanket. It's a top sheet. I don't even just do a, a top sheet. sheet. Yeah. No, he does a blanket. But he does a blanket. Like, you know when you like stay at a really like, cheap like motel? They got That's that like... Do you not sweat? <laughs> Absolute slander on my name. <laughs> but you know they um, have that like, yeah, yeah. blanket <laughs> underneath it? I sleep really hot, but I... Uh, I take both of them off and usually just sleep with the top sheet. But I like the weight to fall asleep with. Oh, get a weighted blanket. You have one of I those? Have one, but yeah. The bear but man. man. One, one time I woke up and it was like around my neck. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not I trust in you. <laughs> like I couldn't breathe. Weighted blankets also make me pee a lot. Or like I have oh, to feel yeah. like yeah. I have to pee because it's just oh. it's the pressing pressure. just enough on your bladder where you're like, I need to just go. Like, I saw could, f- could you guys imagine if I asphyxiated via weighted blanket? <laughs> That's the way you Talk go. Talk about a hoot That's and a half. Good way to go. I feel like that we'd have to like cover up for you. Like just. Like, that would have been hysterical. He wouldn't want to go out. You like would have had it was. You would have had to throw on my body off the Santa Monica Pier and say that I, I committed. I don't think that it's... would be the way you want to go, though. I feel death by weighted blanket. That to me, I want to go somehow like that somewhere you're, like that. You're she funny. died doing what she yeah, loved. Yeah, resting. Resting. Being... <laughs> I saw a tweet that was like, I "Forget weighted blankets. I need to be compressed like a zip file." I know. <laughs> yeah, true. that yeah. is true. Yeah. Okay, back to the night we have back to uh, interpreted yeah. um, Connor's nightmare. Connor. By the way, sorry. Just as a real note, if your brakes ever fail, the the key is get you put just your car, jump out of the car. No, no, you put your car in neutral, and it will start to slow down automatically. Uh, whenever they're failing in my dreams, I'm approaching the intersection too. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Oh, you're approaching an intersection. Mm-hmm. It's always like. I think what's weird is I've never and thought I never about crash. my brakes failing. You wake up, don't you, Jolt? 
I don't know. I jolt going to sleep. It's oh. my it is my least favorite thing about me, and it happens on planes. Yeah. yeah. Every, oh yeah. yeah. Every single time, and I just had a time where I was sitting um, in the middle seat, and I was leaving New York, so it was like a long flight, and I was probably hungover because I was in town with my friends, and I did the thing <laughs> where I go. <laughs> and, I, and I hit the guy next to me's oh, Yo, I'm man. Sorry. his uh, drink, and it <gasps> goes all over shit. his pants, like right here. And my 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 visceral reaction was to start touching his crotch <laughs> and, and picking the ice off of his. And I'm grabbing die. I'm grabbing probably dick and balls. And I'm trying to put him in the cup. He's like, "That's that's good. It's good. It's okay. Don't touch." And I was like, no, "No, no, I'm like I'm like just out of con- like I just became reconsciousized." And I'm like, "Let me get that." And he's like, "Stop." And I was like, "Okay." And I'm sitting middle seat. Like the other person from window was like, "What the hell is going on over there?" And I'm just like sitting there. I'm like, "At least we're probably halfway through. Look out. We're on the." tarmac we haven't, <laughs> we haven't even taken off and i'm like do you want me to get you a new one he's like get me a new you're in the middle seat like i'll get me and i was like it's just it's, it's yeah, sleep it's spindles really, is yeah. this stage, I'm not gonna stage recover two from this. well yeah when you when you sleep spindles that's accidentally elbow someone it's like you've gotten past stage one then you're stage two oh. um, like before rem yes look at us look at, look at us Science. I feel like I'm never ready. Okay, do we have the interpretation yeah. we have, we of Connor? We have the interpretation. Let's oh, get to it. Um, uh, Connor, you said that your common nightmare is forgetting about a college class. Um, dream about forgetting classes in Omen on your desire to escape from the stresses of your daily life and retreat t- into a lighthearted environment where pleasure abounds. You need to carry away and let go of some of, uh, some of your unfinished issues. You feel that you are better than others. The dream expresses the archetypal dream helper who is trying to offer some insight and advice. Your desire for more freedom from cultural and society restraints. That is so you. Yeah, it's so me. I'm better than everyone in this room. Mm. So just like like Khloe Kardashian said, I need to leave this room. But also you (laughs) you always say that like you need to get away. Like you need to go on a trip. You don't like to be bound down by a nine to five or like... You know, when we didn't have the podcast one week, you were like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. You know, something that'll hold oh, you I, down. I, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I, the only thing I disagree with is I don't think I'm, I don't feel like I think that I'm better than other people, but you know, if you the, are. You might if the site said it, like, I guess yeah. it's true. I would say you're top four out of the people in this room. Of Jewishness? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh. I'm an ally. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, no, I think that makes total sense. And I think mm-hmm. I didn't get all of it, but... You like got you all of it. I mean, I like it. there was a lot of bullet Pro- points. Process all bullet of it. points hit, but I think that that was pretty spot on. And yeah, you want to retreat say- to, into a lighthearted environment. You've where been saying you don't want to do anything this yeah. week. Yeah. Well, I uh, I know it's been the busiest week ever for some oh. reason. Like it's been. I've got. I've been up every day at six thirty. Just a- a.m. or p.m. A.m. Believe it or not, <laughs> just like just like trying to get stuff. I've been doing that thing where like you get home from whatever you're doing and you're like okay I'm gonna knock out of this stuff and then once you eat and then exercise or do whatever you're gonna do and you're like I'm actually gonna go to bed and I'll wake up early and do it do you ever fall do you ever get really into like people on TikTok who like have their whole routine like figured out I think no, they're, yeah, lying. I, they're, they're like, lying. They're like, like psychopaths. They're like yeah. Patrick I Bateman wanna, shit. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I'm like, keep that to your. Who are you trying to like prove I, something to? Girls. To, to like, that's the all Emily Mariko effect. Oh yeah? Yeah. What are your she thoughts on like, Emily Mariko? I I it's like a horrible combination of like I love watching and I can't look away and it makes me feel like absolute shit about myself. Why? Because she is just so I think it's like mostly the cleanliness like everything is like perfectly proportioned and laid out and then she's wiping everything down and she cleans once a week and as we've discussed I haven't washed my duvet cover in eight months so it's like you know no that was an exaggeration (laughs) that's not true I lied. Seven (laughs) I lied. Um, But I know what you mean like when you're watching like there have been times where I see someone making like a recipe yeah, and on I'm TikTok. I'm like, I'm going to do that. And yeah. then I'm stressed exactly. from the moment I'm in the kitchen where I'm just like, how are they planning out I'm the timing? I'm just like, how does she do that? See, for me, I'm like thinking, and it's probably it's self-diagnosed because I haven't, I got rid of my therapist. She was... Got rid? What did you do? Throw her on the river? What does that mean? No, no, no. I hadn't even met her yet, but I like, <laughs> she was, she was not old, but she was way older than me. And I'm like, you're not going to understand the issues that I'm having because they're brand new issues about social media and stuff. And I just really don't want to talk to you about them. My therapist specializes in social media stuff. Send my contact info to her if she's taking me. I think that's a conflict of interest. Do you think you would rather want a guy? I don't know. Do you think? I well, I had like a female therapist and like she was great, but I feel like there was this weird psychological Uh energy where like I viewed her as like a maternal figure and I just wanted to be absolved when I think I could have gotten a bigger boost from like 
a, a man telling you like, dude, hey, buck, buck up. up about that. But that's nothing against like male and female roles, but it's like I just you need but different I things from different people. In myself, what I I could have. I couldn't almost, have a male. You therapist. almost need a therapist to tell you. This is the therapist that you need. Yeah. 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 Like that's a great like sort of program if anyone wants to start like a matching. We got a lot of free uh, ideas. Program. Velcro yeah. and the duvets. Yeah. Like therapist matching program. <laughs> yeah. That's if I really had good. all the money in the world, I would get Dr. Gary Penn over in Brentwood. Who's that? Is that Pete Holmes's therapist? Yes, but he's a celebrity to like a lot of like other. He's like a celebrity he's therapist. A therapist to a lot of celebrities, Whoa. but he's like good about like because we do deal with this like pressure of like I'm sure he call has it fame, but just following and like. I need to entertain these people, right. but I sometimes I don't want to, yeah. and it's constant. or you don't think you're good enough to do yeah. it, and you're just like, yeah. am I only doing this for them? Am I doing it for and myself? Like, what do they like first? What do I like? Right. Are they the same you thing? You kind of lose track of like what you Where, liked. How, why you started. Yeah. yeah. Have you well, seen like, what? Never mind. We'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Stamps.com. You know, Matt, I don't like the word small in small business because a small business is not really a small thing. It's a big endeavor. It takes a lot of work, and people put their time energy and effort into a small business. And when you're running a small business, you can't afford to miss out on opportunities to grow and keep your customers wanting more. Time is money. Don't waste your time with trips to the post office. With stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how to take your small business to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print out official US postage right from your computer and saves you money in the process. So spend less time at the post office and more time making your customers happy. That is exactly right. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. And for more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. They also give you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. And not only that, you get discounts you can't find anywhere else. Like up to 40% off USPS and 76% off UPS rates. So whether you're an office sending invoices, a side hustle on Etsy, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. All you need is a computer and a standard printer. There's no special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. So stop overpaying for shipping with stamps.com. So sign up right now with our promo code HOOT, H-O-O-T, for special offers that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. There's no long-term contract or commitment required. Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, promo code HOOT. And now, Back to the episode. Um, we had a good chat the other. The yeah, other week. you changed my life for like five, like five minutes, and then I immediately started spiraling again. But when I was uh, with you, and then a few five minutes after, I was like, Mike Shepard just changed my life about hmm. like how we haven't taken a break. Like we might have taken a break, but it wasn't with the intention to take a break. Right. You know, I never, you know? I never think about that until my dad is like, Connor, like, like you you're need always, to step yeah. away. Yeah, and I always thought about that. So I was an advertising major, and they would say like. What the beauty about advertising is you have to fully step you have to go golfing. You uh-huh. have to go on a you have to go hiking like yeah. go middle see a of movie. the day. And like a lot of these I mean, someone in advertising is gonna watch that and be like, I work ninety eight hours a week, you're fucking lying. But like this is what my professor was saying, like you actually have to fully remove yourself to get back into a flow state of like creativity at one hundred percent. Yeah. Because and us like there's no nine to five, you shut your laptop at five and it's like I'm going home, I'm going uh-huh. to happy hour. It's like I wake up in the middle of the night. I'm like, I have to put that in my notes because yeah. if I don't, like, what a waste. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wake up. First thing I think is, like, would that be a good TikTok idea? Like, what can I... And it's like, you never, like, wake up and it's like, okay, I'm going to have my coffee and I'm going to read right. a book for a little bit and then I'm going to log on to Slack. Yeah. You right. know, it's like right you away. To, you're you're like, fishing all the time for uh-huh. ideas. Like, you can't... Right. Yeah. Is that kind of what you guys were yeah. saying? Basically, he- that, like, the idea is that you need to treat yourself and your, your career as two separate things and you need to put a boundary of, like... I'm going to take a break intentionally. And yeah. like what Brooke was saying was like, well, I haven't posted a TikTok in five days. And I was like, but that's not a vacation. That's not a break because you're all- for I'm those five days, it. you're feeling guilty mm-hmm. and you're using that energy that you could have used to rest to feel guilty about not posting for five days. So like you got no benefit of not right. posting for five days. Right. Someone else said Changed something like, um, he's, that's why he's my manager. He's <laughs> yeah. great. And my good friend. Yeah. Someone else said something like, you know, when trees are growing, new limbs or whatever it, it's actually more beneficial to cut them off like cut yeah. off some new ones so that they keeps growing that's how roses grow you have to prune the roses explain that they also expense, like hair they, maybe they expend so much energy trying to keep like little branches alive oh so it, focus on the big ones focus on the ones that yeah. are growing and, and also cut that's away <laughs> that's well that's a good example you cut away what's not working so you can focus on what is uh-huh. but also like 
you can't drive your car forever. You need to stop. To you need to turn the car off to fill put it some, up with gas. Put some gas in it, not oh, a full tank, yeah. because. But it's you need so to, expensive you need, right now. But you have to stop. But you have to stop driving the car to put gas yeah. in it. And what you guys are doing is driving the car, trying to fill it up with gas while you're on the highway. And you need to just stop and be like, I'm going to stop and put gas in the car. And it's so funny because there's the measure of productivity is straight up like for us, it's like likes, views, engagement. And when I think about my level of productivity when I've had other jobs, it's like I went to two meetings today. But the point is that I went to the office, and that's eight hours. I'm like, right. what? I am being so much like leaps and bounds more productive when I'm I am the startup. I'm yeah. marketing myself. It's just easier to measure that way when you're like, this was eight hours in the office. Here's here's my calendar. There you go. Yeah. Really, I'm not doing anything. Right. And I think a lot of people watching that like work jobs like that. It's like, if you got your if you if you knocked out what you had to do without showing face in an office, mm -hmm. you'd be done by 11:30 noon. Every oh, day. absolutely. Right. Like so much of it is just like BS. Like comparison like am i busier than this person mm -hmm. you know it's not actual productivity which is weird That's um true. did you guys ever watch inside the actor studio oh yes oh, it was oh, a geez. show it was a show back in like the early 2000s and the 90s there was this guy named james lifton he ho he was uh the dean of whatever at this thing called the actor studio which is a very big acting school in new york bradley cooper famously was the only one of the only students that like came out of there and made a career. What the show was with this guy interviewing actors, and it was like primetime TV in the 90s and 2000s, so you have like Robin Williams, Sean Penn, Brad Pitt, and he'd like sit down for a one-on-one, -on -one, long, mm -hmm. hour-long interview. It wasn't funny or anything, mm -hmm. but it was interesting. And he would end every episode with these 10 questions, and he would always like, he was like this you know, big dean wearing a suit. Mm -hmm. But you don't hear these questions anymore, and I wanted to pitch... The three of you guys, all these questions. Oh, maybe. Oh, I get to be included, yeah, I, want, I, want I know include that you, you had here. prepped this. Yeah. But, um, so, these quick quest questions? Or? Yeah, they're, they're pretty quick. I mean, we can... He, he would... Sometimes people would expand on them and dive into them, but he would always preface it by saying, the questions... This questionnaire concept was originated by French television personality Bernard Pivot on his show Apostrophes after the Proust questionnaire. And these are the 10 questions. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, was that a question? Because I didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> no, well all right. So we'll, we'll go... We'll go... This is trivia? Yeah. No, no. no. <laughs> We're going to go this way and then this way. Okay. So... Uh, what is your favorite word? Uh, copacetic. Oh my god. Uh, what is your favorite word, Connor? I, bulldog. I don't. I can't think. Of, am I? Do I have time, or is it like you speed have time? Round? You have oh. time. Okay. <laughs> um, oh my god. Wait. I have a list of my favorite words on my phone. Do you? Oh, you no, do. I swear. Oh, I see, this is a great. Yeah. And copacetic me... is a great word. Uh, uh, do you know what copacetic means? I have no idea. No. Me, me, Take a guess what copacetic means. Copa. So if that's from the Latin. <laughs> To cope. <laughs> go on. Cope. Uh, set, setic, that's going to go ahead and be like, for example, <laughs> copacetic. <laughs> that's like, like if you're happy about something. You're, oh. co you're copacetic. Yeah, yeah copacetic in, in a way means just make every sure, making sure everything's like good to go. Yeah, in order. yeah. are you just, copacetic? Yeah, just make yeah. you wanted to call, make sure everything was copacetic, yes. perfectly in line, yes. everything is lined yes. up properly. That was I pretty. Feel like I kind mm -hmm. of that's, and that's because you of stumbled your way through that. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank you, bro! Guys. Job. Thank you. Thank you, uh, um, Connor. Your list of favorite words. I won't. I'll, I won't go through them because the top one is ciao, which just means <laughs> see you later in whatever language uh, it is. Okay, Italian. <laughs> yeah. I like the word zeitgeist. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good word for no reason. Okay. Um, I like the word erroneous. I like vitriol. Ooh. And I like nefarious. Ooh, what's nefarious? What does nefarious mean? Wicked uh, or criminal? Criminal in action. Yeah, like oh. like bad, like bad yeah. intentions. Those like nefarious, like nefarious intentions. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Not at all. No. It's such a nefarious <laughs> move. Well, I don't know what Nosferatu. Is. Nosferatu. From Spongebob. Ah, yeah. Nosferatu. Hashtag like, slasher. I'm Wait, sorry, what? Nosferatu is he the was first Dracula like yeah. short film. Right, called and Nos he made an appearance in that episode of SpongeBob with the Hashley and Spongebob. Nosferatu. Or the emo He's guy. flicking the lights. Yeah. But he wasn't with evil at all. Hand. Oh, I'm thinking of Nostradamus. I was like, the oh, guy who predicted oh. stuff. Oh. Okay. And so, the last one is Apropos, which is... Mm. Apropos. In, ap whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why did I write this one down? Connor it has a really unique way of pronouncing most apropos words. Apropos is apropos of yeah. something. Well, the, like, apropos of nothing. The list is so long, but it's... A lot of times when I'm reading a book, or I've read one book. I, I think, will ever, say, but... good note for life. If someone pronounces a word wrong, that means that they learn that word by reading it. Yeah. So that's commendable. Oh, I, always, I yeah, like certain that. celebrities, like I'll say their name, and they're like, it's that. And you're like, well, so I've only read it. Like right. Harmony 
Corinne. Corinne. I would say Harmony Corine. Right. And then people oh, are like, it's yeah. Harmony Corinne. And right. like, apropos is how you would say. Apropos. That's yes. cool. Yeah. That's in reference to. Mm-hmm. So like how you how we use via? I was gonna say my favorite word's via. Yeah. You know what via stands for? No, oh, I thought. Yeah. Yes, there we go. I had no idea. That makes Put it right sense. there. Put it right there, Connor. Thank you. That's okay. awesome. By way of. By but, way of. But it's like, like via like, email. By way of. But email. how did you get from by way of of via? How did you get to from I by way of via? I think it's like a via? Latin like via uh, elemente of course, Latin. whatever. Yes, yeah. Yes. Well, it always comes out. Okay, so that's my favorite word's via. That's your favorite word. Yeah. Can you, I just we've been saying I've been saying it so much. Maybe you, you should start using apropos. Right. Do you want to elaborate on that or you? Or no, I just it flows off like I've just like every sentence like okay I'll be there soon via car. Like, okay. okay. Oh, it's a very Tristan. Yeah, yeah it's it's I, Tristan. Tristan. I actually yeah. have a list of words that Brooke adopts from other people. On your phone? Yeah. Pull it up. No. <laughs> Pull it up. No, it's just for me. You do not have one. <laughs> yeah, I do. Pull it up then. No, I don't want to. Apropos of this, uh, what is your least favorite word? Oh, I mean, the, the obvious root is moist, which is like a big, <laughs> I guess like. Do you actually not like that word or is that like an internet? It, it's a, it gives me a bit of a. Like sh- like sh- heebie-jeebie feeling. You're up. You're up third, Matt. I know. Hold I horses. figured it out. But there, I feel like there's. <laughs> I don't like. Like stinky. I don't like smelly. Like those. Like words that are just like in by nature, just like kind of gross and. Just, okay, ooh. gross out words. Yeah. Uh, but I don't like. I don't. I love talking about gross things, so I don't know why that bothers but smell, me. smell. You don't want to hear about. Like, oh, I'm a little stinky. Stinky, like odory related word. Odor. Yeah, just nasty. Odor. Yeah. But like, I could talk about poop forever. So it's poop just, like, is great because the the way it comes out yeah. of your mouth is the way it comes out, out of your butt. It, poop. It, it, like, oh, it, it opens oh, up and then closes. Via sphincter. Poop. Yeah. yeah. Via we're talking sp- about sphincter. That's another good word. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, we were talking sphincter. about that recently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Connor, your least favorite word? I don't think I have one. Cool. I have a fr- <laughs> okay. I have one, but it's like a phrase. Okay, and it's it's not just that people uh, like when you're when you're uh, like having a conversation a with somebody one-upper? and you're and you're adding in, you're like oh and, and and that too right and they go it's not just that a one it's this it, it it like they shut down what you're saying. I feel like you can receive somebody else's like adding into something uh-huh. more. Okay, that helped me out a lot because I don't like when people are like you know, you know what, to start their sentence. Just start the sentence. Oh, I do that. Every... Can, I, can I ask you a question? Is that on your list? You, know, you just that... did. You just did. Yeah. You yeah. just yeah. asked yeah. a question. <laughs> oh, my God. It's can filler. I ask you a question? What time is it? Ha, ha, you, could, you could have just asked me the question. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. That kind of bugs me. And okay. It's not just that. Like, if you're in, like, a, like a creative session and you're, like, contributing ideas and, like, you, you'll say something and someone's like, eh, it's not just that. It's, uh-huh. the, you know, oh, it just. It, that's a little oh, bit of me. That's like now, calling someone. Now that you've said it in that context, it's I'm like calling that. someone buddy a champ. Yeah. Well, it's not just that. Well, it's also the it's negating what you had just said. Yes. It's like not yeah. being enough. It's, it's uh, yeah. what's the word? Condescending. Bro, yeah. in a way. You're a woman in tech right now. I know that. Look at you. You're playing the boys game. I love boys and being <laughs> one of the boys and <laughs> one of the guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll be right back after a quick word from today's sponsor, Rothy's. Matt, have you noticed there's been a pep in my step in the last few weeks? I sure do, Mike. And there's been a pep in compliments that I've been getting from everybody around me. And you know what? People cannot keep their eyes off my feet. And I'm pretty sure that's because of Rothy's. Rothy's shoes are incredible. They're comfortable. They're sustainable. They are so easy to slip on and take off. The first time I put on a pair, I was, it's like one of those new experiences in life where you realize, oh, I didn't know shoes could be this easy to take on and put off. They're so comfortable and they look amazing. And what I also love about Rothy's is that they're made completely from recycled materials. And they're also super versatile. For example, I'm wearing them on the podcast today. I wore them to Patricia's birthday party. I'm going to wear them to dinner tonight. They look great, they feel great, and they go with every outfit. And what Matt and I both love is the RS01 sneaker. Mm -hmm. I also have the driving loaf for a little bit more of a summertime kickback, but they are truly the most comfortable, amazing sneakers I've ever owned. And not only that, they've also dropped brand new colors in their spring collection. So you can refresh your footwear with colorways like classic Portobello or Bold Azul. And they're also designed to be incredibly versatile. You can rock them with a suit, a pair of sweatpants, and everything in between. And my favorite thing is that if they're dirty, you just throw them in the wash and they come out looking great. That's right. Rothy's shoes are 100% machine washable thanks to their sustainably made material and you never need to worry about dirtying them 
them up. And like I said, they're knit with 100% recycled materials. Even the sneaker laces are made from plastic water bottles. So it's no wonder that Rothy's best-selling men's shoes get a five-star review from almost every customer. And to top it off, the driving loafer was just named one of Time's 100 best inventions of 2021 in the style category, calling it, quote, an ideal shoe for the late pandemic era. So guys, step into something fresh with the spring edit from Rothy's with new products for both men and women. You can snag something special for yourself or someone else. For a limited time, you can update your footwear with $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash hoot. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash hoot. That's $20 off at rothys.com slash hoot. Check it out. Get yourself a pair of Rothy's and use our link in the description. And, and now, now back, back to, to the, the episode. episode. <laughs> the next two questions are what turns you on and what turns you off. I don't know that that's... Oh, I've got it. Oh, okay. Oh, we can go there. <laughs> what turns you on? I... Do we want... I, li- I love a good armpit. <laughs> You're quite the uh, diametrically opposed <laughs> person here. I don't know. It, not even like I don't like need to hair, be just, or just like yeah. a beautiful armpit just, off, no, on a man. Or yeah, a, no, on a man. Okay. Just like I don't for whatever reason to me that is like the source of like like man like testosterone. So you like tank tops? You like seeing guys in tank no, tops? I love when it peeks out under a t-shirt. Like a hairy armpit or like a well trimmed armpit? It doesn't matter. Like I know. Ready, I would. I would like be turned off by a trimming. Okay. Yeah, I would say a turn off of mine is males like shaving their chests or something. A turn off. That's really interesting. Yeah. Connor, what turns you on? Uh, money, <laughs> success, followers. And I guess what would turn me off is no money. <laughs> okay. Matt? Matt? Oh. There's one, I know Matt. There's one right <laughs> answer. I guess what turns me on is like just joy. Like I like seeing. The people who like are just like I'm just gonna really retract have, my really answer. Have <laughs> yeah, Jesus, armpits and money, <laughs> and then joy. And that's like it's probably joy for me, you know. <laughs> joy. Like, just turn off, just talking shit. Like when people are like really big about just like mm. uh, focusing on everybody else and what they don't like about them, mm-hmm. you know. Like if it's just, like a common yeah. thing. <laughs> what sound <Same>. or noise <laughs> do you love, Brooke? Oh yeah. Uh, I know. What sound you, or noise do first. I like? This is actually something really fascinating because Connor and I have gotten into it about my chewing and he, about how it bothers him. I, I, I have a, I'm a loud chewer. It's not your chewing that bothers me. I, it's I do it's think everybody's that, yeah. chewing. It's my dad's chewing. My dad and I have gotten in such horrible day-long fights not talking to each other because of his chewing. It's misophonia, right? Yeah. 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 It's something that I have that I wish I didn't have. It's genetic. Yes. That, that if you hear someone chewing with their mouth open, you're just... Chewing, breathing, when I can hear a little whistle in someone's... I'm like, can you please blow your nose? <laughs> and they get offended. I'm like, I... It's not... I'm sorry. Like, I... It's like... Okay. okay. Anyway, so we lived together for a bit, and I would try, like, really, really hard to, like, chew, like... Like really, really quietly with my mouth closed. We're talking about favorite sounds, or no? I, I'm getting okay, there. My, I'm getting okay. there. What and sound then today, do you love? so I have, I've been, I've started the practice of like chewing like quietly, whatever. And today, I was really letting loose in my apartment, like chewing these chips, like <laughs> mouth open, whatever. And I was loving the crunch. <laughs> so this also, I think, is a Jewish thing. There's a joke: you never need to ask a Jew what he's eating. You could just look in their we mouth. Can, yeah. it's, oh. <laughs> I want, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I chew with my mouth open sometimes too, and I've been told by my Gentile friends, yeah. hey, hey, hey. I, it's close just like it up, we really, I've, it's like an enjoying your food. I love, yeah. yeah. You get that, because yeah. you get fresh air yeah. too. It's mixing it in with yeah. flavors. Sorry, Connor. So I guess it's like, no, a, I mean, I, I wish I wish that it didn't like bother make, you. Like, I, I, and it's offensive for me to stand up and like eat further away from people. Yeah. Oh, you, you know, will, you will leave the table. I, I genuinely, it makes me. It makes me want to crawl out of my skin. Whoa. It's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. I can relate to that in the sense that I don't like when someone's writing on pottery. Like if you go sure, to like yeah. a painting it's, it's, place. It's a, very, it's a very similar thing. <laughs> you know? You have sounds that bug me. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's like a lot of sounds that bug me. Yeah. To the point where I think that I might be. Do you meditate? Yeah. I do. I'm on I'm on day 24 in a row on Headspace. Oh, no Good idea. job. Congrats. Um, I think i might be this is probably not an autism thing but like there's something there sensory where like issues. sensory, sensory overload. overload yeah everything kind of can bug me if i get too or you fixate too, too, if mm-hmm. i fixate on it it is like i'll be laying in bed about to fall asleep and i'll kind of hear like my fan mm. is like not exactly right and i will be like oh god like i'm not gonna be able to go to sleep i have to wake up turn on the light take the fan apart 
figure out what piece of dust or whatever is in there making it click mm. a little bit every Ooh. now and then. It's bad. So what's your favorite sound? Two favorite sounds. And on the, uh, on the point of chewing and on the opposite side... I love to give my dog watermelon, <laughs> and I love to hear him chew that shit to pieces. Interesting. Interesting. It is like, how he gets the food yeah. fast. Dogs versus people chewing. I'm like, don't oh, chew your mouth up. <laughs> don't walk away with that. Chew it in my ear. Um, and I also like the sound of, um, a, like a mast on a sailboat, like gong. Oh, like yeah. Kind of hitting the, oh. the, the thing, hitting the thing. That was it, my second favorite for me was the sound of like a pontoon boat or like a uh-huh. boat. Like yeah. that, like, I don't know. I it like just always like, like feels like it's summer and we're about and what's to go your out favorite? on yeah. My favorite is like uh, people have like fake nails when you like rub them. Oh, yeah. Like, right up to your Oh, I'm going to echo that. Slow, get it fast. <laughs> You're going to echo uh-huh. that? Oh, that's why those black chat right now. That is also my favorite. That's why those asthma people make so much money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Asthma? Um, I've never heard someone say asthma. Also, a, a, a sound that I hate. A- yeah. a- ASMR, Connor. ASMR. <laughs> and for the smooth brain. It's that's a, that's a, a shortening of it. I I don't like hearing liquid poured into a glass. Oh, I like that. Oh, oh it did. gives me that literal Willies? chill. Have you yeah. heard the thing about how you can hear the difference between hot water and cold water out of a faucet? There no. is no difference. There is. No. You can definitely hear it. Oh, well, wait. I if saw I, if some I, TikTok about it, but I think it wasn't real. Like no, no, it is real. They've done tests that people can tell the difference between hot water and cold water out of it. I think I could. Okay. okay. I Moving think I on. could do it. What is your favorite curse word? Probably Bro- fuck. <laughs> <laughs> is that really one of the Yeah, what's your favorite curse word? <laughs> Probably fuck. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what that is, Mike? Yeah, no, that's uh, <laughs> like the Marilyn Monroe thing that... Miranda Cosgrove. <laughs> no, I've seen it. I've seen okay. it. Uh, Brooke, do you have a favorite curse word? I mean, I I say fuck the most for sure. Okay. But you don't have like a Brookism curse word that you? Do you think? I'm I'm like racking my brain. I think it's whatever comes to you naturally. Okay. I, I oh. think pro- like ever changing. Probably fuck. Honestly. Um, I'm thinking like from when I was growing up, like the one that I could slip in and my parents wouldn't get mad at me for. Was ass, and now like how if did you I, slip that in? Yeah, like something that was like, oh, I'm such a dumbass, like stuff like that, or like, uh, oh, what an asshole. I hate like, saying ass because I get tripped up on the A. Like, uh, so. I have a weird thing with my A's. Yeah, so I'm just like, <laughs> is it ass or ass? Matt, it's, it's not ass. So <laughs> you have a favorite curse word? One. Probably fuck, but I don't say it that often. You don't say no. You say you actually say it when you're actually frustrated. You go. Oh, Fuck! Yeah. yeah. You don't you don't be like, yeah, hey, let's go to the fucking bar. Right. right. You I, work, s- I worked at Chuck E. Cheese's, man. Right. I got a filter. I right. don't I don't drop bombs like right. casually. It's also, I think, a northeast thing to drop curse words. Right. In More. the south, you're very proper. You you can't get away I with like, that, but if I cuss before like like in the morning, I literally feel so disgusting. <laughs> like I have to feel like really? I feel like I have to brush my teeth. Did you, guys gr- did you southern kids gr- or Texas kids grow up with parents who would curse? No. Um, you never heard somebody be like, hey, what, what's going on? What like the fuck it was are you like doing? A, whoa. No, 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 no. My huh. dad, but my dad now, I feel like curses more like that now that we're adults. Mm-hmm. It, it honestly is like a guard. way of bonding really? sometimes yeah. where I'm like, we don't need to be cursing <laughs> right But you now. never heard my somebody be like, hey, curses, hey, hey, like, when you're, you're at your friend's house, your mother, like their mom never said to the, your friend, hey, why did you leave this shit all over the place? It would be like a big like, really? I go home and tell my parents I got <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'd be like, they're like, they curse at their house. They yeah. live in an no, abusive no, no, no. home. It wasn't like they were... curse. It was like the mom is like off her fucking rocker. <laughs> my oh friends my who were like God. only chill, like kids who were like only child, their parents their would parents like curse because they don't uh... need to worry about like, I don't know. Lifestyle personality and TikTok sensation Tinks has a new podcast called It's Me Tinks. In each episode, Tinks brings her voice that made her an overnight sensation. From product recommendations, Botox, boys, and more, you'll get to hear her dive into all the hot topics and burning questions you want to hear, all in a snackable 20 minutes. You'll take your relationship with Tinks to the next level and get an inimitable glimpse into her life. It's going to be a wild ride. So you can listen to It's Me Tinks every Monday and Friday on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, the XXM app, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to follow the show so you don't miss an episode. And now, back to our episode. 
Next question is, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Brooke? I, I've i always wanted to be an author, but I'm not... I, I, I'm not oh, great. I can write, but not. I want to write fiction, but I don't know how to do that. So I would like to attempt that. Didn't you write a bunch of fan fiction? I wrote one. Okay. But no, you've read. I wrote. I've read wrote, tons. No, so no, I mean, sorry, you've written I, two. Wait. Oh, the no. one I read was Matthew Gray Goobler. Yes. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I, I guess. I wrote that one. Oh, okay, my bad. My bad. That's okay. Yeah. Well, I'm this sorry. is something you could attempt and continue I to I feel attempt. like I would be really good at writing, like, nonfiction. Just like if someone gave me something to write, I could put string some words together and write it well. But that doesn't interest me. I want to write fiction, I, but I would have no idea how. Okay. Connor, do you have a profession other than you one that you would like to attempt? Yeah. I, I would like to work in VC. Oh, yeah. Be a venture capitalist. You want to, like, hear people pitch you their companies and yeah. decide if you want to fund them or not? Write them a check? I do. And I thought you meant video chat. <laughs> <laughs> I would want, well, I'm similar to Brooke. I want to be like a children's book author. Mm. Oh. But I think I can and what a hopefully great gig. will yeah. do that. I think that there's a, like a mafia behind children's books because there's, I mean, it is, anybody can do that. Yeah. I the, had, the Apple. Well, the yeah. Apple is happy. Yes, the end. But there are I, some I, children's nine million books copies. that are so much better than others. Um, um, oh, wait, but you didn't ask me. Oh, wait, I said children's book, but yeah. also I, 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 interior design. I wish I was like a professional interior designer. Mm. Yeah, like, you're pretty really, good. You're pretty good. Like someone like, in the Hamptons is like, hey, we just bought the new estate. You just, Jerry Seinfeld just bought a new house in the Hamptons. Like oh, I have that full would be cool. power wow, of yeah. like designing someone's room. Or like That's also what just renovating like... We're adding wood panels, like all that hardcore DIY mm -hmm. stuff. Jared's uncle does That'd that really in New fun. York. Oh wow! Yeah, we used to talk to him all the time. He'd be like, "Oh, the chairs from France are late," and we're just like, "Okay, bro." Like, oh, I'm into that. Totally. Shit. Uh, wow. <laughs> um, this is the last question. Okay. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Wow, that's that feels deep. Um, how would I like to hear him say? And anyone who has an answer. Gotcha. <laughs> Mine would be, are you fibula from TikTok? <laughs> you don't have to wait in the line. Get up here. You have a plus one. Uh, that's pretty good. So that is good. Matt? I don't know. I guess mine's like deep, I guess. Well, let's hear it. Oh, I think it, uh, it's more of like kind of a... Like joy. A... <laughs> you said you like joy, right? The laughter of children. Get your ass in here. I don't know. Like, fuck these I don't know. Children. Just like... Like Sorry. just like assuring like it all turned out how you wanted to, right? Like that. Oh. Like I don't know, just kind of like affirming like wasn't that bad. It was pretty great kind of a thing. That's oh, what I wanted. That's that, a that's a good one. Yeah. You know? I heard one when I cuz I used to watch this show. I don't remember who said it. But what they said was uh you get up there and and he goes, "All right, that was a good practice run. Now we're going to send you in for the real thing." I, that I like because that reminds me of when I was so, so, so scared of dying. My mom would tell me the story about how, like, there were twins in the womb and they were about to be born. And they were like, well, this was it. It was nice knowing you. And then they were born. So, you know, so they think that's that's life. Oh, that's all wow. life. Like this, yeah, yeah, we're in the, we're so in the we womb right like, now. We're basically in the womb right now and we don't know what's coming. But I, I don't, what, what this I one is is, like, you basically have lived – a practice round right. of life and then you get to go back right. and like yeah. oh I already know how to do everything same it's, life well, or you just, are we just thinking, thinking uh, much into it it's just point. I don't know I don't yeah. want to over extract it but I like the idea of yeah. like that was a good practice run now let's go do the real thing yeah. damn I don't like that at all. <laughs> do you think you're crushing you're, it? You this is not done. a practice round. I just want to go I see just, heaven I want to see the, the real thing you know what I actually think and I'll get deep for a second F it since you're talking about heaven I should not cuss um, I think that heaven to me would be like you have all the time for and you can see all your friends for as long as you need to and you don't have to split up and everybody's there. You know Damn. what I mean? Like I don't have to like plan out, take PTO, I have to be I have to get to New York, see my friends, and then oh there's this trip, like there's a group going to Cabo but I can't go because I have to be back. Or like I want to go to Texas for my friend's birthday and it's like no <laughs> worries. I oh. they're gonna be there for a while, like chill, like hang out with them for a while. It's like being at a party and like it's like 10 p.m. and then it's 11 p.m. and like you have so many friends there and it's like you see the clock ticking and you're almost about to have to get an Uber home. But then it's like daylight savings time and it just resets. resets so you don't think you would want space for if eternity? You want, if you want it. If you, you want to be it. with me for eternity? You can, no. no breaks? Exactly. Yeah. 
I changed my answer. <laughs> um, it's, no, it's, it's that the is idea perfect. Having that it. is like I, you took the answer straight out of my head. Just that like, is ideal. Not worried about time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's a very human experience because that's truly the only currency that you get to spend is time. That being said, mm. I like I like to be like okay. Yeah. Time to go to bed. <laughs> right. I can't come, guys. I'm tired. Yeah. Well, um, that that wraps up the ten. Inside the actor's that studio questions. Fun. That, that was, was a fun great. little exercise. I'd, love, great, I'd love for you to send, good to send that my way. Yeah, we. I, let's, I want to continue doing that. I feel like yeah. it's a good a good prompt for new guests. Right? Yeah, actor studio's over. We can take that. Yeah, yeah. I haven't I haven't heard those ten questions since I've seen no, the last episode of that in the nineties. There was one we took off because it was a little like. Well, it's it's what profession would you not like to attempt? And we're not here to denigrate anybody's yeah. profession. That was like the nineties. It was different. I don't want to be on Deadliest Catch. That doesn't seem fun. It stresses me out. The show itself. I don't want to catch crabs. What, oh, They're I passionate about it. That. They, they couldn't. They couldn't hear me say that and be like, "Damn, that hurts my feelings." I wouldn't want They're to be a lawyer. That seems like yeah. you. You literally just have to play by rules. Yeah. There's no ability to be like, "Yeah, I don't really like that one so much." It's like, no, no, no. That's the statute of limitation. In the state of Georgia is why you're just like, "Fuck that." I wouldn't want to be a teacher. You, are you were a teacher. I know, and I have been but having all nightmares. But to the teachers oh, in the world. nothing but respect. Like, it is the hardest job, and that's why I don't I don't have the stamina, unfortunately. I think I teaching learned. might be one of the it, it's most the hardest. difficult I, I, and most yeah. valuable jobs 100%. that we have in society. Uh, oh, I hope that didn't come across I, I, as me bashing teachers. I everyone just, knows that you were... You right, were, I just don't yeah, think yeah, I could do it again. I wouldn't want to manage other people's money. That's oh, stressful. Yeah, that's stressful. Like just having like to come back and be like, sorry, the return wasn't that big <laughs> yeah. this year. Because they all talk this like big game, like, oh, big returns, mm-hmm. our portfolio is insane. Sometimes I'm just like, that's they not gonna You know st- what? I wouldn't want to be a meteorologist. I would. No, they're wrong every day. Ah, but you get to wear a fun suit and say the weather. That that's sounds true. I fun. didn't think about that. The, uh, <laughs> they, they did that. There was some like study that they did with like the biggest hedge funds versus monkeys throwing darts at a board of like selecting stocks and investing, and the monkeys perform better than like professional stock traders. Wow. So yeah. you're you're not wrong in saying that that's all mumbo jumbo. I just I just don't want to have to like Lucky come back to somebody and be like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Maybe. I lost your money. Um, all right, that was a really great ending, that, Mike. Yeah, thank you so really much for doing Mike. that. Great idea. And also, really. I want to say my thanks and gratitude for both of you for coming. You guys have an my incredible and gratitude to you. Incredible too. dynamic. I am so happy that you guys are my friends. You guys are a ball of light and energy, and um, I'm just really excited for the thanks, future. Man. Oh, this was so much fun. We I mean, love you. We, that was the easiest podcast we've really, really ever done, easier probably, than, yeah, than, than ours. Than ours, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> talk about dynamic. really great. Well, you're you're welcome. welcome. Yeah, thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Talk about Hoot and Half over here. Um, so, awesome. uh, yeah, plug all of your stuff so that people know when, or not when, but where to find it's you. It's Thursdays. Yeah. They come out, or ours is live about now, probably now or around in now. an hour. Yeah. Uh, you do it. You're really good at that. Well, we our podcast is right right to the barrel. Of the camera. Yeah. Tell our the people podcast what they want to hear. is Brooke and Connor make a podcast. You can find it anywhere you find podcasts. We're on all socials at B N C M A P Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and um, I think that's it. I'm Fibula and she's Lady Efron on everything. Right. Too, so and except for yeah, no, pretty much yeah. And if you love this episode so much and you want to see us talk to Brooke just alone without this guy in the room, <laughs> comment down below. We'll know that you stayed for this entire episode because obviously Brooke, we want to have you back. Be there's gonna be none, there's, and yeah, I'm gonna be so upset. <laughs> I really do, but also I wanted just to share your yeah. podcast so we can. Give y'all more followers. Y'all can give yeah, us. Yeah, I, I want to yeah. have you guys on ours. Yeah, that'll be so great. <laughs> and that cool. that would be fun. S- studio swap. Yeah. Are we hanging out tonight? Or yeah, aren't we going out? Uh, Are you going I, to go I, out? I, Shoot, I forgot about that. I have said that I would like to stay in, <laughs> and I'm getting a lot of pushback. Well, Patrick already texted me about a pregame, and we're yeah. celebrating. Uh, I know. So Tristan now I'm feeling and, uh, like Patricia's podcast. Grits to glam. Check yeah, it out. Grits anywhere to and glam. Everywhere. I'm feeling like I have to um, now. Well, we celebrated Jaws. Yeah, so. yeah. Now I'm I like... mean, I will. For, I forgot. Mm. So I'll be now having to drive home. Oh yeah. Um, and leave my car at home. So. That's all right. All right. Well, we'll see you guys. Okay. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs>